<sighs> so I'm doing this again. A few things I want to get off my chest. Um, well, today's topic... Expectations. I think I want to talk about them. I think I want to talk about them today. So... Expectations, expectations really are what makes or breaks someone in life in, in general. Where someone can look at people's expectations of them, their expectations of themselves. And they can either break down and, you know, think to themselves, I'm never going to meet them. There's no way. Or they can face that and try to be better. But I feel like, I feel like people don't really stay in one side, in one camp for too long. Kind of flip-flopping. Back and forth. It can be anything, really. Academics, creatives, even your body. You have expectations for those. People have expectations for those. Constantly, constantly, I fail to meet my own expectations. I, I really want to improve, but with what I'm doing now, there's no real easy way for me to look and see my progress. Um, and I am guilty, like with many people, of um, blaming factors that are outside of my control for my failures. Like, oh, my PC keeps crashing, I can't work on this properly, or Oh, my internet connection's slow. I can't really study properly or something like that. Something that I can't help, you know? And to an extent, it's understandable. Like, eventually you're gonna just hit your, hit your ceiling with whatever, whatever equipment or outside factors have for you they're, they're like constraints um like say 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 you have a box right the wall the walls of the box are things that are generally not directly influenced by you so things like equipment, the weather, um, the availability of other people, uh, etc. They really decide how much you can do with what you have. And they can be limiting, but what's actually inside of the box once you start like filling it up is the things that you put in like your own effort the information that you've taken in and adapted so that you can use them and i feel i feel that i'm lacking in that second one 
because well a lot of people think they're in a much smaller box than they actually are myself included um but it's still still really hard to break that habit of blaming things even though i know that it's not those things fault anymore it's not those things fault yet like i can bitch at my pc for being slow but that doesn't really change the fact that i never work on anything or or i never finish anything sucks i wish i were better i wish i were more consistent more driven but Once I start noticing that I'm not making progress, I'm not really meeting my expectations for progress that day, like my quota, it gets difficult to keep, what's called, keep grinding, to use a gaming term, to just keep grinding until I reach that level of skill, but it's... Uh, I lack, I lack resolve. I hate that I lack resolve, but I know I lack resolve. I have a lot of things that I want to finish, that I've started, but I still haven't finished. Maybe if I, maybe if I tell them here, it'll make me, it'll make me want to finish them, but, ah, fuck it, and it's no secret anyway, I don't really give a shit, so, let's, let's split this up into the things that I'm working on, I want to get better at art, so I can fucking draw my OC, I've had this, this story for this character for so long, that I want to make it into like a comic or a manga or whatever. I just want it to be illustrated. But, you know, money is not something I have. So I can't exactly pay for anyone to do it. So I have to, I want to do it myself. Or I have to do it myself un unless I, you know, find the money and an artist that's willing to work with me on it, but uh, mm, moving on. I, I really do need to finish up that design, or like get better at it, so I can start on designing the character. Like physically, it's not really physical if it's all on the screen. Y you know what I mean? Like to really flesh out this character, and then. Yeah, what? I, I just also kind of want to draw my friends, you know? There's so many stories with their characters that I want to just capture. Some, some are memories of like conversations we've had, others are just things I've thought of after reading their, about their character and ah oh god I, I wish I could draw them so badly but I feel like I've hit a block I I feel like my skill has plateaued on the other hand I also haven't really been looking at for information to improve so that's also kind of my fault like you can't exactly learn math if you don't look for how look for something to teach you math right so i need to work on that next up music well there's this cover <laughs> there's this cover that's been in the back of my mind for the past how many months has it been i wanted to cover rookie I really did. I still do. 
God damn, I can't sing for shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just listening to myself. It pains me to listen to myself. I can't hit the notes. I'm always either too sharp or too flat. It sucks. There's a lot, a lot of original compositions that I have on my computer that I just need to write lyrics for and sing and then, you know, mix and master and what have you. But I just can't, man. I'm working on one right now, but I can't fucking write the lyrics for it. My head hurts just thinking about it. Ugh. Fuck me. Oh. What else? I think that's all for the music thing. Right then. Transition from lyric writing to actual, like, narrative writing. I have a lot of stories that I've put on hold because I wanted to work on other things. There was one about, well, there was one about a dude that came home one day. You know, after work, fell asleep, knocked the fuck out, wakes up, there's now a woman beside him. Apparently now he has a female clone, and the female clone wants him dead. But their living situation, really fucking shitty. And the guy, though the guy's like, kind of a deadbeat, he's a nice guy, knows that this really isn't an ideal living situation for one person, let alone two, tries to clean up his act, and eventually, you know, starts treating her like the pseudo-sister that she is to him, and eventually there's like... A make or break decision like originally i had thought of like if if both of them are still alive by like a month the end of the month the sister just disappears nobody except him and the person that cursed him will remember her but by that point she would have had her own life had her own like boyfriend, her own group of friends, her own memories, and would that really be okay? But the other option is, you know, him dying so that she would stay. And I wanted to explore that so badly because, again, he starts off the story as a deadbeat. He cleans up his act to make her, like, feel like family but in his head he still thinks of himself as that deadbeat so if you were in his shoes thinking of yourself as a failure and seeing essentially a better version of you being happy would you Give her your space in the universe. There can be only one. Yeah, that was a story that I wanted to, to pursue. Another one was uh, kind of a more, more of a lighthearted one. Say two sh uh, it's Essentially, it's two shapeshifters. Just kind of want to get, you know, freaky. Like... Imagine one day one of them goes comes home from work it's like and the other one's like hi honey um you don't look so well is everything okay and then and then the first one the one that's tired as fuck just like i just 
I'm tired. I, can I just go to bed? So the second one goes, just watches him go into the bedroom. She's like, comes in dressed like a woman, like sexy woman. It's like, but he's not, he's not doing, it's like, he's too tired to care. Comes in as a hot guy, still too tired to care. Turns into like a fluffy cat and then just sits on his lap. So he just strokes her or, or the, the first shapeshifter that just came to, came to the work, just strokes the, the second one until they're calm. And are able to like talk about what happened that day. Another situation is like happy hour. Like think of it like really, really back in the day. I say back in the day like I lived it, but like I, I'm 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 a young boy. I say back in the day, but like I wasn't alive for this. So happy hour. Uh Women, women get drinks half off. Both of both of them, who went out looking as um, a dude and a girl, just look at each other. The dude, the one looking like a dude, goes into the bathroom, shape shifts into a girl, all for the sake of saving money. Other other dumb shit like that. I want to explore that dynamic of like if you could just and then you're someone else that would be fun I should work on that again let's see uh, here's one I thought of just recently earlier this morning I've been listening to a lot of ASMR to help me sleep because my sleep schedule is destroyed so, party going on. Party is going on. The narrator and the listener kind of break away. Narrator's like, hey, uh, thanks for throwing this surprise party for me. Still can't believe I'm, um, still can't believe I got that job abroad or something like that. And then blah 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 conversation happens like well oh I'm not that good I wouldn't have gotten here if it weren't for you like if, uh, I mean it ever since we were kids we've always been here you know and though we may like bicker and fight and argue you're always by my side, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Um. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna regret this. Fuck, I'm gonna regret this if I don't say. Look, I. For all of my life, you've been here by my side. And I want to spend the rest of my life that way, with you by my side, or something like that. I'll word it better. And then he confesses, but he still has to move away. So it's like, um, I love you. I don't know when I realized that I loved you, but... I know I felt this way for a long time, but don't give me your answer yet. I'm going away tomorrow. <laughs> That's the whole point of this party. Six months. I'll be gone for six months. And if you find someone else to make you happy, while I'm away, by all means, just go for it. I'll understand. Uh, 
Are you sure? Are you sure that you're really going to do that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh. I'll keep in touch. <laughs> Fuck me. Why do you always get me to act like this, man? Uh, I, I... I should... Yeah. Sounds like everyone's starting to head home. I should probably get to bed too. My flight's pretty early. You want to stay over? All right. And um, hey. So while I'm away, please wait for me. And then end the end of the thing. And ow. Fuck, I hit something. Ah, fuck. So, that's like the end of that. That's the end of that. Fast forward to real life six months later. Part two of this. <laughs> part two of this would be... Or insert knocking sound here. Um... Hi, I'm back. So, like, if I if I released it now, it would be part two would be released on February. So yeah, my plan for that. Um, and yeah, just you know. Maybe I'll put like other things in the in between, like put the phone phone like EQ filter on me so that it sounds like a phone call. And then like bada bing bada boom, Ho the whole long distance relationship story condensed, bam. And I don't know how I want it to end. Like, do I want it to end with her waiting for him the entire time and then finally getting together with him, like, for real, like, properly? Or do I want to have it so that he comes back and she's already in a relationship with someone else? Like, I'm, I'm still extremely torn with, with how I want to do this one. Whether I have him confess, I have him confess, but not get an answer. And then when he comes back, she's in a relationship with someone else. And moving on from there. Or I have him confess, she promises to wait. Then, you know, he comes back. They get together properly. Happy ending. The end. I'm not sure which one I want to do. Maybe I'll do both. <laughs> but that means I have to do it. Ah, uh, I really want to do it now. Fuck. <laughs> There's another one. There's another one that I want to do. It's um kind of a weird one. Part one of this this new story. Best friend meets up with listener. They they go out for drinks or some shit. Listen listener confesses like I just went through a breakup. Best friend's there to comfort and it's like, no oh, you, your ex was such an asshole. Like show slight slight yonder Signs, but not committing to the full yonder thing. And then they like, you know, but keep it platonic, at least for the first part. And it's like, hey, 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 
Man, no matter what happens, I'm here for you. Okay? I'm gonna cry on my shoulder. Come on. You can't let your life be decided by one bad breakup. Because, you know. There's, there's bound to be a lot of good things that are yet to come, or something like that. Something, I'm, if I I should probably like actually write it down so I can go over it and make it actually sound good. But you know, basically part one, just a comfort thing for people that have gone through a breakup with slight yandere things. Part two would be a few months later, maybe a few weeks later, I don't know. They're talking again, like they meet up again, they're walking home or something, and it's like or like they're at his house playing video games or reading or hanging out or whatever. And then she brings up the ex. They bring uh, the listener brings up the ex again. By this point, the narrator is kind of pissed, and you know, yonder stuff happens. Listener gets knocked the fuck out. Wakes up with muffled, like muff muffled voices in another room saying oh god oh god what have i done what have i done what have i done leandre has instant regret but kind of has to commit to it now like oh shit there's no turning back now there's ah oh, fuck i should not have done that then then he then narrator tries enters room tries to act like leandre Gets called out for faking that the Yandere act and just has a heart to heart with the listener. Part three. Part three is like, you know, just a date or something. I, to be honest, I didn't really think this part through, but yeah. I just want to have that instant regret because <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. To be fair, I also haven't looked for it yet. But it would be funny. And I want to try it. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's gonna be good. But it would be funny. Has the potential for the funnies. If I can get my act together. Okay, next thing I want to do. Right, this story. This story I've always, always wanted somewhere. Starts off with a princess eating lavishly at a buffet practicing some teleportation magic with her tutor. One, but she's always wanted to go visit the town, like, on the, on, like, their family outings, like, while she's in the royal carriage. She wonders why there are no fanfares or cheers for the, the royal family as they ride through the town, and she wants to investigate. So one night she just opens up a little portal, heads down to the courtyard, and makes a run for the gate. She gets noticed by the royal guards, who give chase, and she just keeps running and running and running. Oh wait, before that, before that, before everything. Okay, wait. The yeah, rewind, rewind, reset. Starts off with a princess. She's studying space spatial magic, so like teleportation and stuff and portals and things like that and pocket dimensions. 
with a tutor. After that, a bell chimes. It's lunch. So she goes over to meet with her mother and father. Her father is currently in a meeting with a few of his advisors. One of the advisors says something like, Your Highness, I really don't think this is a good idea. A resource are getting thin. I think I think the mines to the north are already out of iron. Please, we can't keep doing this. Our kingdom will suffocate. And then the king dismisses him, and then meeting is adjourned as as the princess like enters the room. It's like, the princess enters, king's notice is like, I think that's enough for today. I'll meet with you all another time. And then the, and then the advisor that was like, hypercritical of the king, looks toward the princess, and it's like, they kind of lock eyes for a bit before he leaves with the like disgruntled ah, or something like a like a short grunt as the advisors leave and then the the royal family eats you know like a feast as royalty does in fiction but again, and then they go the king has to do like a speech in the middle of the in the middle of the city. So they take a royal carriage around midday or like mid afternoon down. Again noticing that there are no fanfares and that while his while her father is giving the speech, the crowd is just kind of looking silently with very restrained reactions or either contempt or anger or just apathy on their faces and then the princess starts to wonder what's going on with the citizens and the so that night again sneaks out like magics up a portal into the courtyard of the castle leaves gets spotted by the guards gets chased notices that a tavern on the far far edge of the city like near the walls or somewhere near the walls of the city it's like lit up there's a lot of hustle and bustle she figures hey that's probably where i can get some information and figure out what the locals are thinking or like the citizens are thinking goes over there still kind of chased by the royal guards and then starts listening into a conversation and the conversation is basically hiring a group of mercenaries or adventurers or something to help with a revolution to overthrow the king the, the, the royal family in general and just and then as she's piecing it all together she hears the royal guards marching up approaching her and the tavern notices it too like Wait, marching, a lot of marching, I think that's the sound of armor, we have to go, we have to go, and then, and then the princess goes in like, a revolution, revolt, you're foolhardy, or something like that, or like, she, she thinks initially like, oh, these bastards want to kill my father or or like these ungrateful bastards want to kill my father or something like that i don't i haven't really thought it through yet but just as she does this the royal guards like arrive she fills them in short scuffle short scuffle and then she like manages to pin down 
pin down one of the adventurers. One of the adventurers has has her foot on on their chest with a sword to their neck, and then they kind of lock eyes, and then she just sees pure terror <laughs> and sorrow and guilt on the adventurer's face, and causes her to drop drop the sword to her side, and she just yells, "Stop!" But fighting still happens. Chaos everywhere. There's fireballs being shot everywhere and arrows impaling people left, right, and center. And one and someone has a crossbow aimed toward her head. It fires. And then just a wall of some wall of I don't know wood rock something magical blocks it and then the adventurer is like she said stop come on let's act like adults here and talk this out obviously that doesn't work so he so the adventurer is like god damn it Casts another spell. Encases everyone in that in that same like magical voodoo huju shamalama ding dong thing, so that they stop moving. Are you willing to talk now? Something something. They talk. Princess finds out. Oh shit! The people in my country are suffering. And, oh yeah, the one trying to hire the adventurers was that same advisor that was like, hey, our kingdom is about to fucking die. So something like that. So, princess was like, I want to help. My father... My father has turned a blind eye to all of these atrocities. Let me help you. A ruler should strive for their people and blah 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 de blah. The the revolutionaries understandably don't fucking trust her. Castle guards stand there, stand there, tied up and confused as fuck. So the princess walks over to them. Join us, or I'll wipe your memories. Half of the guard, like some of the guards, decide to join with the revolution. The other half choose to get their memories wiped, and like the people, like drop them off in the street or something I don't fucking know but like after, so she joins the revolution and their first order of business is to get the fuck out of the city because they just caused a whole lot of commotion with a bar fight so it's all hands on deck escape from the city blah blah blah, blah. they leave they leave Go to like a camp in the middle of the woods. People don't trust her. So she's just there in a tent alone. Until the uh wizard adventurer that she all that she had the sword to just walks in and is like, Hey Thanks for not killing me. The thanks for saving my life. Um, I I know that you're going to have a hard time believing me, but, but I really do want to help. Please give me a chance. Uh, 
You want to help? Fine. A lot of people were injured when we tried to leave the walls. Do you know any healing magic? Or any first aid? Go around. It's not like they can refuse when they're bleeding out. And then the two of them go around mending, like healing people. That's the end of the first part. Second part, time skip a few months. Princess is now like traveling with the adventure adventure mercenary group. Still kind of difficult, finding it difficult to get used to the, you know, not having a feast for every meal, but Princess tries to act humble. Then Then they get their first like letter assignment message from the person leading the revolution, like the advisor leading the revolution. <sighs> We're bolstering forces to the west. Our advances to the east have been halted by general insert name here. And his army. We need him out of the picture. That the the general like rings a bell for the princess, like the name rings a bell. This that general was one of the advisors that was in the court. So boom, assassination mission. Objective find and kill that general. <laughs> they meet up with that general. Have a fight. They kill the general. As they're like resting for the night, a bit like a ways away, to recover their stuff, like. They cover their ma mana and like heal up and stuff. Princess is just rocking back and forth. I killed someone. And and then she has to like really convince herself that she can do this, she can do this. It's for the people. And then the the group the mercenary group just kind of consoles her, it's like we don't like it either. It has to be done. Then group hug. Maybe group hug or maybe it's just the wizard. Who knows? Maybe. But eventually she starts getting like rapport with the resistance revolutionary movement. But she's still not 100% trusted. Uh, so one night one night, the group meets up with the 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 leader and the main army. Like a few, just a few battles away from actually storming the castle. And there's just a general air of distrust between the princess and the army. And so she has a, that night, she has a talk with the wizard again. It's like... Or, I'm not sure if it's a talk, or maybe she's just writing in like a diary. But essentially, she's like, I, I killed someone. The advisors that I've 
had casual talks with my teacher. Those friends. My cousin was one of them. I... I'm not sure if I can stomach this. I think I'm about to go insane. But... If it's for the people... I... I'm, I'd gladly... Lose my mind. I, I just wish. I just. Bleh, 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 I can't speak. I just wish that. That. Perhaps. Their opinion of my family. And their opinion of me. Would change once this is all over. I really, I really want what's best for them. I can't stand by with the suffering anymore. I've tried my best to be, to be the princess that they've always wanted. To be a good ruler. But now, now I'm not sure. I... Uh, I'm not sure if that's her tone in the final thing if I decide to write this but basically the wizard's like oh, come on guys stop shit talking her especially when she can't hear it no, how about we spy on her snaps his fingers they all start hearing the princess's voice and it's like oh oh and then she starts going on like, uh, I've had many wonderful memories. So, in between all of the gruesome realities of war, I've, I've truly met some wonderful people. The blacksmith in the western town of insert name here. He was kind, loving, cared much for his daughter. I hope that the bag of gold that I left him serves him well, though so he wouldn't know that it was from me. <laughs> the teacher in the town to the north. Taking care of so many children. I'm envious, honestly. If I could do the same, I would gladly. The nurse. She took care of my grandfather once. I still remember her face. Maybe when the dust is settled, I'll make her the royal doctor. <laughs> Move her out to the castle with her family. Give them a good life. And those kids, given a bad lot in life, but smiles on their faces were real. How I wish to smile like them. I know, I know nobody can can see it because this is a recording. But I, I am subconsciously just moving my fingers as if I was writing this down in like an actual diary. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> but like, the the message ends. Whole camp heard it. Starts like easing up on the princess. Then comes. Then comes the di the day, the the night before the big battle. 
princess and the wizard are on the outskirts of the walls. On uh, guard duty. Staying on the outskirts because, you know, it's right there. Then... Then... They have a talk. Princess is thankful about everything, about the group showing her what the world is really like, and making it, making it enjoyable despite all of the horrible, horrible things inside of it. And the wizard, the wizard just smiles, looks over all of his spell books. Filled to the brim, hands her one, says, I have these spells, but I cannot use them. I'm just not good at them. Healing is not really something I practice, so my skill with it isn't the best, but... I believe that you can make good use of this. You have a kind heart, princess. And... You're going to be a good leader. A great leader. I guess... I guess... Tomorrow is our goodbye. Once we're done here, it's not like we can track you around and keep going on adventures, you know? <laughs> I'm going to miss you. It's been fun. Then the princess is like, if only, if only there were a way that the people would be able to decide their own leader instead of it being passed down to me because of my bloodline. And then something something happens, blah blah blah. Democracy gets invented in the world. Something something. Yada yada. Then she, the princess, uh, they're like, hey, we should really wake everyone up now. It's about time we get ourselves ready. Don't die out there, okay, princess? Oh, like you want to talk? Who's the one that's been saving your ass this entire time? Oh, such language from the mouth of royalty. I'm surprised. Oh, shut it. You, shut it, you shaky bastard. Uh, some big fight happens. Oh, yeah, this is like split up into different parts. Big fight happens. Eventually, king and queen get captured. King, they're in. Princess looks at them as they're locked in the royal dungeons. Father? Mother? I. I never would have expected this from you, my daughter. No, you're not my daughter anymore. And then the queen is just like... Don't... Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him, darling. I... If you think this is what's right for the country, then I'm going to support you, no matter what. You were next in line to be in charge anyway, so I guess you're just taking the throne a little early. <laughs> and then that laugh is just pained and sad. And then execution day happens. 
Princess wakes up late. Wakes up. Notices it happening. Starts running. Father gets his head chopped off. Then it's the mother, the queen's turn. And then she's like, No, wait. And then she like tries to convince the citizens to like spare the queen. I'm not sure how I want it to go, if she succeeds or not. But she then spends the next few days just in her old bedroom. And then occasionally she'd wander over to the king and queen's bedroom, just running her hands over everything, looking at old paintings of them. Blizzard comes in to check on her, finds her in the king and queen's bedroom. I know, I know my parents were monsters, but they were still my parents. I... <sighs> Princess breaks down crying. Blizzard comforts them. If you haven't noticed, there's a romantic subplot. Ha ha ha. They reveal their feelings. Something something. But Wizard just lets her grieve for a minute or two. Or ten. Or an hour. Before the two of them like or he says We're gonna have a meeting with the others soon. Their new advisors. Um, they want to tell them about this whole voting thing. And then Princess nods. Fast forward to the end of the voting meeting. Everyone seems in agreement. Citizens will begin voting like in the coming month for the theater that they want. After that meeting, princess takes the wizard to the royal treasury. A personal thanks for everything. Um, if I I'm not going to try to be the new ruler. I want to keep adventuring. What about you? And then the wizard pulls out the third book that he always had. The first is his, the first book is his spell book. The second book is the spell book of spells that he can't use that he gave to the princess. And the third book is a collection of stories that he has written down on their travels you know this I think I think I think I'm going to retire or maybe take a break I feel I feel like I've had enough adventure for a while and I want to try something different. Maybe, maybe I'll open up a bookstore. Magical books or normal books, I don't really know yet, but I want to tell people of our story. So, if you're going to keep adventuring, this is still going to be a goodbye, except you're not the one staying in the city. <laughs> uh, kind of strange how the world works, <laughs> uh, but I do want to take a break for a while, and maybe this bookstore will will be fun. 
or maybe it's maybe I'll work at the library. I'm not sure, but I have I'm excited for this. Something new. The princess and him like hug or something, and she's like, "All right, I'll make sure to come back with a lot of stories that you can write down." And then, then they kiss and scene. Fast forward even further. Princess comes back. Whoa, that's loud. Princess comes back. Or no. Wizard Wizard is sitting in his bookstore, right at it's like closed, but he's still there, just cleaning up or reading something. Then there's a knock on the door. It's like Oh, I'm sorry, we're clo- Oh! Well, you're back. Where is everyone else? And then the princess is like, Oh, it was horrible. I- I, I didn't cast it in time. I- 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 Oh god. Oh god. Nah, I'm kidding. They're in the tavern, getting wasted. <laughs> so, how have you been? Oh, you're such a dick, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe that you were royalty. And they, like, catch up, share stories. Eventually, the princess is like, Or the ex princess is like, you know, maybe you're right. The quiet life does seem appealing. Do you have. Do you have them? Um, do you have. an extra room here for an employee? <laughs> And then the two of them like get into the relationship for real, get married or something, just live a quiet life in the bookstore, just selling books, teaching kids magic, occasionally teaching, occasionally the princess would volunteer at the, at the city hospital with her healing magic. The end? Question mark? Man, man, I want to write. I want to make this story now. God damn it! <laughs> okay, what else? What else? Is there anything else that I'm working on? I think that's pretty much it. At least those are the ones that I can remember. If I remember something, which I probably won't, my memory is shit. But if I do, I'll talk about it next time, if there is a next time. Holy fuck, I've been talking for over an hour. Damn. <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of um things that I want to work on so badly. I just have. Why am I not working on them? I'm not sure. Fuck. <laughs> but. You know, you know, in hindsight, talking about this would make my expectations and the expectations of other people really like it would go from zero to something because nobody else knew about this. Now, now that people kind of know about this, they're going to expect something which 
kind of, you know, double-edged sword. Because, like, it makes me want to make it. But also, I'm really fucking scared that I don't meet those expectations. So, yeah, back to the topic at hand. I got really, really sidetracked. Maybe, maybe I have too high expectations for myself. Should really tone it down. Really assess what my skill level is and make, you know, expect that. What's what's the word? Make calls about it based on that. But um, you know kind of hard to like when you want to be something to prove someone wrong it's hard to be humble I want to make some it's hard to explain so I'll just it's hard to explain so I'll drop context there's someone in my life that keeps constantly guilt tripping me for being confident sure i am confident in the most assholey way possible but they guilt trip me for being confident by saying that i haven't really accomplished anything with my life so yeah that's not a fun relationship to have sadly they're right I have not done anything with my life. Everything that I've told you is a work in progress. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) But maybe that's why I want them to be above and beyond. I want myself to make something above and beyond. So so that I can shut them up so badly. Because it's so difficult. And people say, oh, you're not shit. You haven't done anything with your life. And it's it's so bad when it's true. Uh, it's not for lack of trying, mind you. Just, you know, the way cookies, the, the way the cookie crumbled. Yeah, not good. But I want to just improve improve to the point where if they say that to me i'm going to show them everything i've worked on hopefully hopefully i get good enough get enough attention and maybe get paid enough for them to realize all right all right i'll stop talking shit but you know, that comes with time. Time. That's that sucks, you know. Time. Time makes things difficult because you never have enough. But that's a topic for another day. I've talked for way too long, so I think that's it. <laughs>